Hey guys, this is Chris here with the Holy Schmidt's blog. Uh, just want to share a little story with you. Um, kind of known for that in my my ministry, I like to like to tell a lot of stories. Um, I'll tell you a story about uh, that, that I told recently to um, my kids in my my ministry, my my youth ministry. Where I'm, um, I have a I have a friend. Uh, his name is Charlie, um, and uh, Charlie is an atheist, and uh, he's been an atheist most of his life, very smart, very intelligent sort of person, and, uh, um, you know, we we got to find a way to be intelligent in our conversation. If you're, I mean, if you're a Christian, be smart. You're called to, to rise above, to uh, to be an intelligent, thinking person, <clears throat> to know your stuff as well, as well as be able to uh, to, to defend that, to provide a rational defense of your faith. Well, well I, met, I met Charlie. And uh, um, and over the years we've, we've emailed, we've kept in contact, um, and uh, he would, he would be 19 now. Um, he's in college, about a couple hours away from here. And uh, in my blog, actually, Charlie and I have been talking real recently about um, about uh, well, possibly co-writing a few things because he's he's a very smart. He has he asks good questions. Uh, he really he challenges Christians in, in what they believe, not because he wants to turn them down, but because he he wants he generally seeking answers. Um, now Charlie's self-described atheist, you know, um, he's more an agnostic really. But uh, um, I was supposed to go meet him the other week, and, and and this is the the story that I was was telling as far as a frame of reference for time, um, and. Uh, um, was was going to go and we're going to sit down and, and chat about a few things. He'd been asking me specifically about you know, the intelligence of Christians. Why don't we put together what he called a, uh, uh, you know, a, a version of Christian intellectual elitism? Uh, you know, he said get the get the smart people together and provide this real rational defense for your faith. And I could go on for that. And I'll, I'll probably maybe write to him about that in the future because he has some real pointed questions on that. And uh, um, so I was hoping to get together with him the other week, uh, the weekend, and that kind of fell through. It didn't happen. Um, and uh, so I was, was able to tell him, my kids, I'm going to go and see him this week, uh, this weekend, actually. It's, it's confirmed. It's happening. Uh, because while well, we didn't get to see him last week, uh, this week we're putting him in the ground. Uh, I'm a pallbearer at his funeral. And uh, he died the following the day after we were supposed to meet. Um, <clears throat> don't really know what killed him. It doesn't matter. He's, he's not with us anymore. Uh, but I want to share with you, when I first met Charlie, what what we discussed, and I shared this with a number of people because, let's face it, there, there are a lot of stupid Christians out there. Uh, you just, you don't know your stuff. You don't know why you believe it. You're just parroting what you what you've been told before in the face of of arguments. We we get into arguments that that have no bearing in in reality. We're not called to win arguments for Christ's sake. We're just called to represent Him for who He is. And let people make that decision for themselves as the spirit moves. We're, it's not up up to us to make people saved. Um, so so when I first met Charlie, he he was asking some some great questions. I was was uh, um, had, had the ability to, to kind of draw this thing on there and to demonstrate a lot of different things for him. But he said he used the argument in the end. He said, well, in in the end, we all go to the same place anyway. So what does it matter? And I said, well, it, it matters. But you're right. So we we all go to the same place in the end. And he's just like, what? Really? That's not what I hear from every other Christian out there, including his Christian friend who was right there introducing me to him. And I just said, no, I said, you're, you're absolutely right. But I said, it's, uh, let, let me demonstrate. So I said, here, here's what we got. So we got this big old cliff here. Get that glare off there. And here's all of humanity up over here. There's Charlie. I wrote his name on there, on his body, if you can see that. Um, I said, we're all going over. We're all walking. We all end up down here at the bottom of the cliff because this cliff... This is the end of life. We're all going to die, and the Bible says that in Hebrews nine twenty seven. You know, a man is appointed, you know, to, to live once, and then, you know, then then to die, and then the judgment. Uh, so I said, we're all going over. We're all moving forward in life. We're all kind of falling over here at the end. We're all going to fall off the edge of the cliff. We're all going to go down. And you had a little motion there, ah! and we're all going to wind up down here at the bottom. I said, now. Over here with, with Christianity, we, what Christ did was he made a way for us down over here. It's a, it's a narrow way. It's hard. It's difficult. We're coming down this craggy, climbing, like the secret stair off a of Mordor. And we're climbing down this thing, and only a few pulled off the edge. And we're crying out, everybody, this is the way. We'll make space. Let's do this. But we all arrive down here, the same, at the bottom. This guy is walking over this direction. 
hands with it, guys. I said, now the difference is, the difference is not where you go, it's the condition that you arrive in. At the bottom, we've got all those dead guys that fell off the cliff, landed on the rocks, they're all busted and broken up. And then the ones that went the hard way, but they arrived alive. And the Bible teaches that in, in, in our eternal hope. It says that um, that there will be, in Acts 24, 15, it says that there will be a resurrection of both the righteous and the unrighteous, that in the end, everybody is going to be resurrected, whether you died as a sinner or as a saint. We're all coming back to life. But then at that point, then there's a judgment. That those who are righteous will be appointed to eternal life, and, and I'll talk about righteousness in just a second. Um, then, there's, uh, uh, then there's the unrighteous who are going to have... Uh, uh, as well, a similar body, but you're going to have those that are corruptible and incorruptible. So an eternally corruptible versus an eternally uh, opposite. I'm not sure what I just said. Uh, it, it's kind of like this, and I was just describing this to Charlie. So it's, it's like having a Promethean body. Uh, Prometheus, the Greek god who brought fire to man, uh, as a punishment, they chained him to a rock, and because he was a god, uh, his body regenerated with the, uh, with the sun every single morning. He came back, and the vultures came and devoured him every day in an incredibly painful uh, way. So every day he came back to life. He had an eternal godlike body, but that, it was eternally dying. And that's kind of what we're going to have. I'm not trying to scare anybody into heaven, out of hell, I, whatever. That's between you and God, wherever you guys stand. I'm just saying this is what the theology says. And it's not exact, but, but it's a really good example of maybe, maybe how that's going to be. Um, uh, so I want to tell you in, in 1 Corinthians 15, uh, just because I do like to always at least give you guys a little snippet of the Bible uh, as far as where I'm reading. Uh, it says in the mystery of the resurrection, um, I say this, brother, and flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed, is what he's, what he's talking about. Uh, for the perishable, I'm moving on, skipping a few verses. The perishable must put on the imperishable, and this mortal must put on the immortality. Uh, but when this perishable will have put on the imperishable, and this mortal will have put on immortality, then will come about the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? So death is going to be toast. It's not even going to exist anymore uh, under under the power of God and what's going on there. Um, so you know, I, I don't I don't know where that puts you. Like I said, this this applies differently if you if you're a Christian, uh, a real Christian, versus a, a, a you say you're a Christian but you're not, or you you haven't generally surrendered your life to God. Uh, like I said, I, I shared this with with Charlie. We talked about it a lot. You never know when you're going off the edge of the cliff. You just don't know. Otherwise, I mean, the decision is easy to make. It's, it's, it's easy to get, to get real and get right, to, to, to sit down and think about your faith when you, when you say, oh, well, I'm, I know I'm going to die at this time, so 12 hours before that, I'm going to make sure that I go and I do everything right. Um, there's a verse where Paul admits, if Jesus, uh, you know, if Jesus didn't resurrect from the dead, if these things didn't happen, then, then our faith in vain. We're, we're, we're the most foolish of all people. Uh, and, and I could talk at length about that, but uh, he says if that's the case, then we should eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. We might as well live it up now. Uh, but he said we know that that's not the case because we have evidence of, of Christ. We, we know these things, and, and I can share about how I know these things if you like. Uh, I mean, if you have questions on this, I'll tell you, I'll give you, I'll give you my personal email. It's chris, C-H-R-E-S, at Y-F-C, minnesota.com. Send me an email. I'll, I'll chat with you. I'm not afraid about that. I, I, I don't know what you believe, but here's the thing. If you don't believe in Romans, it says this, for all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. Uh, it goes on. It says, for the wages of sin is death, and the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Uh, and Jesus declared in John, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born from above or born again uh, through Christ Jesus. Uh, it says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's arriving alive at the bottom. Uh, he also said, if, uh, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. The scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again in Second Corinthians. And here I am, I stand at the door and knock. And here's my voice and opens the door. I will come and eat with him and he with me. Get in touch. Love to hear from you.